think I'll be ready. Oh. I think it'll be just fine. Who are the Bengals going to pick in the second round? What is up, Bengals fam? It's your boy Mike coming back at you on a Tuesday, March 30th. It's my wife's birthday. I won't tell you how old she is, but she is age appropriate. Today, what I wanted to do, everyone's everyone's talking, I'm freaking out. Who, who are the Bengals going to pick a five? Who are the Bengals going to pick a five? I think one way to kind of make a better sense of it is to take a look at who might be available at 38 when they pick in the second round. That might influence what they do at five. So what I wanted to do today is take a look at the PFF. Uh, PFF added a thing to added a feature to their mock draft simulator where they keep track of where everybody who mocks um, who mocks on their system the average draft position of each player, right? And I went through and I picked out some really interesting um, players that are slotted in that second round range where the Bengals are going to pick. And I gave one uh, interesting one. Basically for my boy, Jake Lisko, who's uh, one of the hosts of the Locked on Bengals podcast because he loves him some Deami Brown. We'll talk about that as well. Um, but what I wanted to look at is uh, are there going to be legitimate wide receivers, right? Um, that, that are, we, we know that there aren't going to there's not going to be a Kyle Pitts, a Jamar Chase or a Penny Sewell available at number 38. But is there someone who could come in and play? right now and make make an impact and is that per is that player going to influence what they do at number five right probably not most teams probably don't uh, probably don't think about the draft that way because you can never predict who's going to slide to you at any given point in the draft you, you can't even predict who's going to be available to you at pick 15 let alone all the way into the second round right so a few of these interesting ones i wanted to take a look at the first one I have on the list there is Elijah Moore. He's the wide receiver from Ole Miss. Um, on PFF had him graded in the 2020 season um, with a 91.2 overall grade as a wide receiver. Now, Elijah Moore is a small, smaller guy. He's like 5'9", about 185. He is a true junior, um, so the age is pretty good, you know, is about right. Um, he, however, is more of a slot receiver, actually, the NFL, the comp that PFF puts on him is a faster Cole Beasley. I'm not saying that the Bengals couldn't use a faster Cole Beasley, but the Bengals right now have one of the best, if not the best slot receiver in the NFL and Tyler Boyd. So adding a guy like Elijah Moore might not be, that's, that's not really what they're looking for to add to the wide receiver room. Um, what they're looking to add to the wide receiver, wide receiver room is a deep threat, right? And the, the deep threats that can create separation and, um, I want to take a look at Rondale Moore because Rondale Moore's average draft position on, uh, per PFF is number 25, right? And you can see, you know, it's not for you to slip, you know, from, from a late round, late first round to an early second round is that happens pretty much every year. I, I'm sorry. Did I say, uh, a lot, the, uh, Rondale Moore's average draft position is not 25. I was looking at Rashad Bateman. His average draft position is 31. So if this guy were to slip, you know, but we're talking about the same kind of guy, but he has actually more. Um, I think he has more chops as a downfield threat than, uh, than Elijah Moore does. Uh, he actually uh, graded out this past season in 2020 with an 80.9 score. He's another 5'9", 180 guy, but he's a true sophomore, meaning he's even younger. So that breakout age is really nice. And his, his comp, Bengals fans, you guys are going to love this. His comp is Steve Smith Sr., so remember all the all the trouble Steve Smith Sr. gave the Bengals. Uh, say what you will about his kind of personality type, but uh, I thought it was interesting he played for the Ravens because he always played like a Steeler to me, and that's not a compliment coming from a Bengals fan, by the way. But uh, if you can get a guy like Rondell Moore on your team who can who can um, one thing Steve Smith always did was uh, even without the size is he always drew the attention of the safety because he was always getting uh, open on the, that vertical route tree. So when you get when you can create separation on the vertical route tree, that's when that's what the Bengals are really looking for. They don't have anybody that's really good at that um, right now. So that's uh, that's Rondale Moore. So there's Elijah Moore and Rondale Moore. They're, it's just funny, you know, they're both named Moore. They're all both also very like similar players um, in general. They're both kind of slot sized guys. 
um, and probably are going to end up being slot receivers in the NFL. I wanted to talk about Rashad Bateman because he's another guy that I've seen actually a few times in the mock drafts. I've seen him available there um, when the uh, when the Bengals pick, right? His average draft, draft position, he's number 18 on PFF's big board. He's His average draft position is 25, um, but he's more of what the Bengals are really kind of looking for. So what they're, he, he graded out at an 81.8, um, but he only played five games in 2020. Um, 2019, an 87.1, but kind of uh, his, his comp, uh, and this is a big uh, compliment, I think, from PFF, his comp is Keenan Allen. Big time, uh, <laughs> that's a big time comp. That's really good. The Bengals could use, he's a, he's a bigger guy. He's six foot two, 210. Uh, so he's, I mean, that's, I think, roughly um, right around what Tyler Boyd size is for a, comp, for a comparison in your head. So that's another option the Bengals might have. Um, so uh, looking at that and then taking a look at Deami Brown, he's 21 uh, and a half years old. He is a junior, plays for North Carolina, six foot one, 185. What's interesting about Deami Brown is he might slide to number three. I don't know if he's an option. If you really were hard up for a wide receiver, none of these other guys were were available. Deami Brown would be fine at pick 38, but you can see his average draft position is 60, which means he may slide to them in the third round. Probably not, but he might. Uh, but Deami Brown's another really interesting uh, pick um, because and it would be interesting to see what he runs at, the, at his pro day. Um, actually, he may have already ran his pro day. Let me look. Yeah, he ran a 4-4-4. So Deami Brown could be a really interesting. And because he ran that fast, by the way, that means he might not be available in that round three. So round two, he could be a, he could be a target for the Bengals in round two. Um, but if you want to look at some other really interesting uh, players that slotted out right into uh, the average draft position right around where the Bengals are going to pick, Jalen Phillips. It's really interesting because the Bengals need an edge rusher. Um, I think it's a low low key big time need for them is edge rusher and. Honestly, another pass rusher from the interior. Um, but Jalen Phillips, six foot five, two sixty six, twenty one. He's going to be twenty two when uh, when the NFL season starts. He's just a beast. If you've never seen him play, he's um, he's big enough to set the edge, but he's got really good um, uh, pass rush moves. Um, the uh, comp on him for PFF is uh, Frank Clark, which is a good one. He graded out on an eighty six point eight last season, um, playing for the Hurricanes. Uh, Physically, it's all. This is what this is what PFF says about him. Physically, it's all there to be a tier one edge rusher in the NFL. His injury history and late breakout age will scare some teams, right? So uh, he didn't have his. He didn't really play like a star in college until he was a little older. That's why they say that about the breakout age. And uh, yeah, he does have some injury history, so that that's what you're looking at. But he is a top. He's. Um, on my big board, I think he's my number three edge rusher. So if the Bengals were able to get the number three edge rusher there, that'd be great. Speaking of edge rushers, just Jason Owe's average, average draft position is uh, 29 per PFF. And the thing about Owe, um, he's also a little older, so he doesn't have that great breakout age. Um, how old is he? He is 22. Uh, he's, he'll be about 22 and a half when the, almost, yeah, 22 and a half when the season starts. Um, he graded out last year, placed for Penn State. He graded out last 6'5", 252, a little bit, so same height, a little bit lighter than Phillips. Um, graded out 85.3. Uh, his, by the way, his comp is Montez Sweat, you know, if that tells you anything. And, I, and I've heard lots of things, lots of NFL, uh, NFL player scouts and player evaluators really like Jason Owe. They really like his game. They really like... Um, his juice, which is actually what PFF uh, says is his biggest strength, his juice. Not bad, huh? But his biggest weakness is his passiveness, which means he's not instinctively aggressive, which is what you really need off the edge. But um, you can kind of get that with culture, really. I mean, you can you can install some aggressiveness uh, with culture. But Jason Owe, uh, PFF's number 23 ranked player, he's an average going in, the, uh, in their mock drafts at 29 so there you go a uh, couple of edge rusher options for them now let's look at uh corner so asante so you've got asante samuel um available he's really the only kind of interesting guy that's uh that's going to be available for them 510 185 he, he he looks to me like a slot corner um honestly in the nfl but he is uh 
probably he's in the top five in this corner class, right? So if you can get a top five corner in this class at uh, you know number 38, um, he's the number 31 ranked player on PFF's big board. His position per PFF is going number 38, right where the Bengals pick, right? So 81.8 overall grade this past year. Um, they don't have a player comp on him. I don't think that they're really um, there yet. But honestly, he looks like to me right now, he, he looks a lot like Darius Phillips, um, but he's uh, stickier. Um, he's uh, He kind of plays like that, if you want to know. So, you know, that, that could be another injury. And, he, you know, you, you want to get younger. You want to get um, your corners of the future in there. Uh, and Asante Samuel. The, the, the question will be how good is he in zone because that's really what it looks like the Lou Anaruma was wants to run he a lot of zone uh, does he communicate well does he understand zone concepts those are the kinds of things you're only going to find out in player interviews and these guys won't meet with me I reached out to all of them right into their DMs none of them want to meet and talk to who daily you know they're lost not a big deal whatever so let's take a look so that's the only corner I, I could really find that was kind of slotting in that in that range um, but I want to take it some of the offensive linemen because th this is pretty interesting. Um, Elijah Vera Tucker is uh, ranked at number 34 overall on the on PFF's big board, and he's going at average draft position number 36, which means it's right in the range of where they could get him. 6'4", 315, super versatile guy. So if you wanted to, if the Bengals wanted to draft a guy that they know that could play any position on the line, maybe outside of center, um, and it means and kind of get coverage for um, if they get if they get injuries or if like you know he could he would come in and compete for the starting spot for the right guard for the right guard starting spot I mean they, if they drafted him they want to come in and compete and win it but even if he doesn't uh, anybody across that line gets hurt he's your guy he can plug right in and play that spot right so he's really he's really interesting T J Lang is the comp that they have for him on PFF eighty one point eight is what he graded in six games in twenty twenty. Um, Vera Tucker, this is what they say. Vera Tucker is one of the cleanest offensive tackle prospects in this entire class. He's also a high floor guard. That's pretty much what the Bengals need, right? And if they don't draft Penny Sewell, if they end up going uh, like, like the reports seem to be recently, if they end up taking Joe, Wur Joe Burrow's word for it and drafting Jamar Chase, uh, which uh, I had a tweet yesterday saying, look, if that's true, if, if Joe Burrow wants Jamar Chase and then they go draft him, I say go do it because what that does is that puts uh, ex, you know, uh, extra incentive in there for Joe Burrow to make Jamar Chase worth the number five pick, meaning throwing it to him on deep routes and making his – and if, if, the, if that connection succeeds, if Joe Burrow – to Jamar Chase succeeds, the Bengals offense succeeds. So uh, if he wants him, if my quarterback's coming to me, especially if he's Joe Burrow and he says, I want that guy, I've already played with him, here's the tape, I'm taking him. You know, if I've got that kind of grade on him, I'm taking him. So what could happen here is if they end up taking, um, if they end up taking Jamar Chase, there, you could you could end up getting Elijah Vera Tucker in the second round or a guy like Sam Cosme. I think Sam Cosme's, um, Sam Cosme, his, Pro Day probably vaulted him up quite a bit, but they, he's their number 37 ranked player overall in PFF, and his um, uh, his average draft position is 43, meaning he's almost he's there almost all the time. I've mocked him to the Bengals in the second round a bunch, um, but he's six foot seven, 310 pounds. He's 22 years old. Um, he is just he graded a 90.8 um, in 2020. Uh, Cosme has the physical ability, but needs to get with the quality offensive line coach. Guess what the Bengals have? One of the best offensive line coaches in the league now that they've got Frank Pollock and, and got uh, Jim Turner out of there. So um, the the interesting thing here is like these are these are plug and play. All of these guys on this list would come in and play like immediately if they needed to. And Cosme could play right. He's pretty tall. So you don't want guys that are like over 6'6". Six, six, generally playing uh playing guard for you unless you have like super tall like jared out or a josh allen type uh quarterback but and joe burrow is not that but he could play right tackle and we we already know uh we already know that riley reef can play right guard so i mean there are lots of options here but i just wanted to take a look at kind of that draft position uh everybody's talking about the number one pick but i think who's available at number two could be a big influence on what they do at at, at number uh, at, in the first round at number five, and that's going to do it for Who Daily today. Thanks, thanks a lot for joining me. Let me know who you think they should pick down there.
at 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 number one, and then after they pick that, what they should do at number two. Pick from this list, or, or you know, tell me who I missed down there. But uh, love you guys. Keep coming back every day for more Bengals news. Big who day from your boy Mike. See ya.